All right, so here we are. First episode of my NCAA 06 Dynasty with Appalachian State. Now, I've actually already rebuilt Appalachian State in this game before, but I did it on my PS2, my original PS2, and I'm now on PC, running the PCSX2 emulator. Much better graphics. Gameplay is much better. It's just overall a lot better. Um, and I've enjoyed using it, and I decided to just record my Dynasty. It's mostly just for my purposes to watch it, because I enjoy watching it. It would be fun to go back and look at the early days of the Dynasty and see where it was at, and all the good players and stuff, and who won the national championship, and things like that. So, our head coach is Ringus McDingus, and he is a young guy, and he's going to run a run-and-gun offense. We'll get into that here in a sec. Oh. Sorry, he's taking a sip of water. And so I also wanted to add one of Appalachian State's rivals in this game. Oh no, I did actually already add them. So I added Georgia Tech, or uh, excuse me, Georgia Southern into the dynasty. And there they are. There's their coach. That will be a rival of ours in the Sun Belt. I thought that would be a fun little storyline. I was going to make Coastal Carolina and put them in. But honestly, the create team, while it's a great feature, it it isn't great like in terms of what you can do with it. So I decided to just skip it and go with this since George Southern's already in the game and they have a roster and stuff. The one thing I really don't like about create team in this game, I love all the customization options and stuff, but I really don't like how there's only like two or three roster type. There's a bunch of roster types, but there's only like two or three of them for that are one star, two star. And the one star one is like so bad, it's not even worth using. So I'd have to go in there and man manually do it. And I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like doing that. So we're just gonna keep it as is with App State Georgia Southern. Go ahead and begin the dynasty. Really excited about this one. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna do any actual recruiting restrictions necessarily. I'm going to be able to go after ever I want, just the best players that are interested in me, the best players that I pick in the offseason, or during the season, I mean, in-season recruiting. And I think probably what I'll do is limit myself to you know, the southeastern states, like in North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, that air, that region. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do while I was in here was actually something. I just wanted to make sure that I was right real quick because it affects the way it looks pretty significantly as you probably saw right there and I just didn't want to wait to do that. Okay, so first thing I'll be doing is going to set what I'm going to be what I'm going to be running. Um, so. But since we're going to run pass heavy, I'm going to stick with the run and gun offense. It will be a spread offense. We're going to run a 3 4. Hopefully, I can recruit some big guys down low and, and some fast, strong outside linebackers. So, we're going to be an offensive focus, I think. Makes sense. And we're, I think we'll do 55 45 for the run pass. Um, I'll show you the playbook in a sec. And then for conservative, aggressive, probably more on the aggressive side especially as an offensive coach. I want to sub less. At least this year, I might sub more in the future, but for now, we're just going to keep it like that. Go ahead and turn these off. So yeah, that's what it looks like. All right, and then let's take a look at the roster. This is one of the big reasons I chose App State, just because they are an SES team, but they have a pretty, pretty fun roster, I would say playable roster, especially on offense. If you look, our top five guys are all offensive players. Starting with Eisner, who is a senior wide receiver from let me see where he is from. He's from Rome, Georgia, which I will be setting up as a pipeline state for sure. Probably one of the bigger pipeline states that we'll be doing in Georgia. And so, he has 85 speed, 82 catch. I mean, he's nothing like amazing ratings wise, but I have a feeling he's going to be a big part of this team, big part of the offense. I'm excited about him this year. Now, Richie Williams, also very excited about him. A little bit more of a scrambling quarterback with that 78 speed, which isn't 
blistering speed by any means, but could definitely get the job done to go along with 78 acceleration and 76 agility. 84 throw power is good. 76 throw accuracy is not desirable, but it's it's good enough for our purposes. We're gonna be. I mean, it's good enough for our purposes right now. You know, it's not gonna be good enough long term, but right now it'll be good enough. So we have a senior here, left tackle Jeremy Robertson. He's our best offensive lineman with 84 strength. 80, he has 82 awareness, so he'll definitely be should do pretty good for us this year. Kyle Knox, left guard. He's an 80, he is a 76 overall. He's a junior, so he will be back next year, which is really huge. And then we have Kevin Richardson, who's an A6 overall running back, impact player. Will be getting a lot of touches for us this year, without a doubt. Um, go ahead and fix some of his, some of his stuff and make him look a little bit cooler. So yeah, that's, that's the offense. We have a decent fullback. Backup wide receiver is Jeremy Wiggins, and he actually is going to be pretty good for us, I think. Pretty useful, I'd say. 68 overall, not bad at all. Uh, Bettis in there. He'll, he'll probably get a couple of touches. I don't know how great of a catcher he is. 68 catch is halfway decent. Okay, so... Defense is where we're going to struggle pretty bad this year. Especially look at D-tackle, it's just horrendous. Just horrendous. We're definitely going to have to look at D-tackles during in-season recruiting. Let me write that down. Put that down real quick. Okay, so DT is going to be someone I'm going to look at in-season. I think defensive end could be a decent one to look at as well. See if we can find something that fits our mold. Outside linebacker is less of a priority than middle linebacker, which is another position that will be looked at in season. Middle linebacker. I want to sure up this defense because offense we can we can recruit in the offseason. We can recruit some offensive guys. Now I am going to look at quarterback in the in season just to see if there's someone that is maybe stands out. I also will look at wide receiver. See if there's something available there. But other than that, the other positions, I think I'm good with what we have. For now, and then off season we'll address it. So we're not we're not gonna redshirt anyone. I'm also not gonna play Alabama week one. I wanna play a game that is winnable, but yet will be a challenge at the same time. So Cincinnati's intriguing. ECU is pretty intriguing. ECU is probably going to be a hard game. I think they have Chris Johnson. We'll play ECU just to make it interesting. And we'll play, but we'll play them at home to give us a little bit more of a chance. The rest of the schedule I'm fine with. I'm fine with all that. We can play Akron and Vanderbilt. We can we play someone a little bit different than Akron, I guess? I mean, I'm looking for teams that are down south. Trying to also keep it a little bit more realistic, a little bit closer to me. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anybody that stands out. Maybe like a UAB. I don't want to play UAB. UCF seems okay. We'll play UCF. I'm fine with all that. Keep that schedule. Have a fun part in season recruiting. This is where it gets very, very fun. So we do have this guy right here, Mike Waller. He looks absolutely unfucking believable. Excuse my language, I shouldn't say that. Unflipping believable with that 416 speed. So, and he's from Florida, which is a pipeline. I'm gonna add him. A lot of people won't like that, and I mean, I get that. Sorry about that. I get that, but at the same time, it's like, these guys look unreal. Like, look at Brian Jacobs from Georgia, A-plus awareness with 4.69 speed. I mean, that's very solid. This guy's out of Hawaii. Brian Jacobs will be a guy that I'll be going pursuing pretty hard, I think. There's another A-plus awareness here. Look at this guy. 
I mean, another guy out of Georgia. Two great quarterbacks out of the state of Georgia. Very interesting. Cody Crawford has 448 speed, which is excellent for a quarterback. I do imagine he's probably not the best passer. Kevin Bowler has A awareness. He's slow as he's slow as can be, but we're looking at three QBs right there that all look pretty solid, are all from pipeline states. That's four QBs. I think we're good at QB then. Wide receiver is one that I was looking at. We already added one. I'm just looking for states that I can recruit in. Edmund Downing looks pretty excellent with 429 speed. It's 6'4, 200. It's like an excellent player that we would definitely gladly let join the program. So these guys look pretty good. He's in Maryland. There's nothing special about him. I am looking, there's always this one of these guys who's just like 6'7. Spencer Jacobs is probably a, just an amazing tight end. Like, that was just a, probably an unbelievably good tight end. 6'6 through 230. 4'4 four, four speed. We'll add him just because of that. I mean, that's just such an insane... He's such an insane player. So now we have five scholarships left. I want to find one deep... DT that fits the mold of what I want. Three oh five, three twenty five, three oh one, ten, three ten. I'll add that guy from Alabama. He definitely fits the mold. This guy is from Florida, but... So this guy fits the mold as well. He's also from Florida, so I'll we'll look at him. They have to fit the exact mold that I want in a linebacker. Okay, 6'5", 220. For sure. He could move to middle linebacker potentially. So we'll add him. Hawaii has some unreal prospects this year. Okay, here we go. Definitely someone to look at. Joe Clifford. Really hope we can land that guy. That would be amazing. Joseph Lane looks fun as well. I'm going to take one off of that other, this guy. Because I would rather take my chances with them. Okay. So we will leave that as it is. We have no more scholarships. Go ahead and advance. And I will see you guys next episode. Thanks for tuning in. And hopefully you'll join me next time.